morning, everybody. I've never seen a manatee. So this is Manatee Park. <laughs> I think there's a pretty good chance I'm gonna see a manatee. Oh, okay, so it's like a big floating cow. I see. Hi there. Actually, what you're gonna do is okay. you're just gonna put your um, fee in the mm -hmm. envelope. You're gonna put this in your dash. Mm -hmm. And then as you head up, there's a drop box at the kiosk up front. But what you're going to do is there's some RV parking kind of straight up off to the right. You'll kind of see it off there. To the right. So, okay. yeah, you'll kind of hit David will probably help you park, but you want to pull up as far as you can with that. Thanks so for your help. Just watch out for the side. Thank you. Go the grass a little bit. You can. Thank you. So there you go. They're pretty busy for a winter day. They've got this thing arranged really well though. $2 to, to park and then I, I guess you just go on foot and try to find some manatees. That was kind of me when I came in. I called them swimming cows, floating cows, but that's what they look like, you know. So here's the Manatee Park Visitor Center, which gives you some information, I guess. Come over here and get a shot of the uh, manatee right here. See, it's like a big kitty with whiskers. See his whiskers? <laughs> I like that. They're also uh, showing some videos here. Basically, it sounds like the manatees like warm waters, canals, and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of why they're here and stuff. And um, there's a power plant nearby. I guess that supplies some warm warm water for them to enjoy. Not just uh, manatees here at the park. Uh, they got an osprey bird, a black vulture, blue crab, tarpon, the black racer, of course the alligator. Neat. See what, see what we can find here today. I did bring my Canon Vixia so I can zoom in if I see anything neat. Just keep an eye out, right? This is a replica modeled from a real manatee skeleton. His teeth up there in the back. Let's pop up here, take a look at the manatees. I see water. Hmm. They're really making us work to find these manatees, huh? Hmm. Maybe they're hibernating this winter. Uh -huh. Anything down here? Mm, no, I don't see anything. Hmm. I think we're all kind of looking for the same thing. Dang it. I can't just make them appear for you guys. The sign says, if you love me, please don't feed me. I think Jax would argue that, but, you know. Found some. This is where the spot's at. You can see by all the people gathered around. They're down there. I'll uh, get my other camera and see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, so far they just look like floating blobs out there. There's the uh, 84 degrees there in the water down there. That's why they're chilling. may very well be all the manatees we're going to see today. Let's look for some wildlife. This is the river vine uh, wetland here. Nice little maintained bridge. I would imagine we'd see some gators in here. I saw gators the other day over at the lake. Well, you got people in kayaks down here. So they, they rent kayaks, then maybe you can get a little closer to the manatees or something. I'm not sure. I don't see anything in the water though. Look over here to this side. Nope, I don't see any wildlife. 
neat little trip though today, you know. If it wasn't sunny, I would probably be cold. I'm like the only one in a sleeveless shirt, probably looking at me like, really? It's nice out. It's like 70 degrees. Yep, here's where you rent kayaks. Cool. Jax, do you want to swim with the manatees? You want to swim with manatees, huh? Yeah, that'd be fun, huh? Too bad you don't swim, buddy. I think you'd be a good swimmer with those extra toes. Yeah, I think I think you'd I think you'd be a really good swimmer. You want to try sometime? Okay, go swimming sometime. Well, this is, this is real life, guys. Um, I've talked about it over and over. My, vid my videos aren't live. They aren't live. I could say that a hundred thousand times in every video and people will still be confused. My videos are not live. It takes an incredible amount of time to film and edit and then sit down somewhere and upload a video to YouTube. Um, if you want to watch somebody's live vlog from their cell phone that they upload instantly, then you should subscribe to one of those kind of channels. This isn't one. I'm more about quality than, than quantity. But as with all of the expectations of being on the road and keeping the RV in good health, maintenance is an issue. So I can promise you that by the time I upload this video, I will not be at this uh, shop any longer. I will be long gone from this shop. And I'm not even going to talk about the shop right now. I might talk about it later. We'll see. <laughs> when I go into RV places like this, I'm not nomadic fanatic. I'm just a regular RVer. So uh, they couldn't get to me today, but they allowed me to uh, park my rig in the back of their lot. There's another motorhome over there. There's even one over there by that semi truck over there. So they do motorhomes. That's great. You know, some, uh, some mechanics on the road just, just don't. They just don't do motorhomes no matter what. So I called ahead and he said, you betcha, bring your class C in here and we'll get her checked out. Um, the issues I was having is uh, when I'm not on the freeway, when I'm in town and I lay my foot off of the gas and, you know, start rolling into like a stop, the engine dies. The engine stalls and dies. So just taking my foot off the gas after it's been on the freeway for any length of time, more than like 10 minutes or something like that, um, it just kills the engine. It's really like I almost can't tell that it's died because it gets quiet because you've laid off the gas and then just happens. So uh, that, that was the main thing that I want to get fixed. It's not a fuel filter problem because I already got the fuel filter changed. It could be an injector issue and uh, I already talked to him. I also want to get taken care of those other two codes that I had going on uh, when they did the, the check engine light codes at the transmission shop in Jacksonville. They also popped up two codes that were possibly a catalytic converter and an EGR valve. So I want to have them um, re-diagnose all the codes and get all three of those issues uh, all fixed up here before I get back on the road and start heading north. Uh, like I said, I don't think you find this too often where you can live in your RV overnight and say, hey, you know, I know you guys are busy. Get to me when you can. I'm in no hurry. I may go rent a car. I, I may go ride my bike around town and, and see stuff. The, the uh, sunset over there is starting to look pretty cool. Every time people see something bad happen in my life, they jump to conclusions. Eric asking for money. Eric's e-bagging. Eric, you know, Eric's got all these issues, and I keep reminding people every single time. No, I'm not. I got it taken care of. I can't say that enough. I've got it taken care of. I will get it taken care of. This problem will be fixed by the time you watch this video. So, your need to comment on that issue is completely irrelevant. I'll uh, get back to you guys here when I get an update. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant right here, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.